Hello, I'm Michael Levine, and welcome to another edition of Without Notes. Mark Twain once said, never let school interfere with your education. <laughs> Isn't that a great line? Never let school interfere with your education. Well, friends, I hope that this TV show and these episodes with our guest today, Thomas Girardi, will be part of your ongoing emphasis on self-education. To refer to Tom Girardi as an attorney would be a little like referring to Michael Jordan as a basketball player. <laughs> uh, it's a real honor to welcome him to Without Notes. Tom, welcome. Hey, Mike, thank you. That's how sweet. What a nice, <laughs> well, that's some nice words. That was really nice. Well, you earned them. You've earned them. Now, Tom, I think for our audience throughout the world, it would be valuable to begin at the beginning. So where were you born, Tom? Well, I was born in Denver, Colorado, but I was in Los Angeles, third grade. <laughs> okay. I went so to the... Uh, so how did you get from Denver, Colorado to the to you know, Los uh, Angeles at the third grade? My dad. You did. Uh, my dad was a smart cookie. Yes, he was. He, uh, he saw an opportunity. Maybe so, but um, he also was the fellow that invented the radar that lands airplanes on carriers. Wow. And he, matter of fact, they call it the Girardi radar. He never hmm. made any money. He was always, you know, working for some company. Yeah. And he landed on the Hornet in 1942 with the windshields blanked out of the plane, using only his radar to put the plane on the deck. Wow. He was also a poet. To have a mind which is... Yes, yeah, scientific. And then... And creative. Is really something. Well, that's so interesting. So you moved to Los Angeles at the third grade. Now, how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have two brothers. Two brothers? Uh, one which, is a, one's a lawyer who works right here with, alongside of me and no. makes uh, covers up all my mistakes. Okay. And then the other is a dentist. My brother Bob, one of the sweetest, oh. nicest. You normally don't think of a dentist as the sweetest, nicest. No, particularly you know. when they have sharp instruments <laughs> right. in their mouth. But he is, without a doubt. So you arrive in Los Angeles at third grade. And at this point, if I had met you or your family, Tom, third grade, would you have appeared to me to be from a lower middle class family, a middle class family, or an upper middle class family? Oh, middle. Middle class family. Right. So you arrive in L.A. Right. Okay. My uh, dad was a hardworking guy, and my mom ran the household. Yes. And believe me. She ran it. And raised the boys, baby. Uh-huh. You know, she would, she had a wire hanger if we did went, she'd whip our buns like right. that. Right. And she'd say things like, wait till your father gets home. And we all said, oh, father, please come please home. Please come yeah. home. Right, yeah. right, right. So... Your mom was a traditional uh, woman of that time, raising the boys, and your father worked, and it was a middle-class home. Was there an emphasis on education, or what, what did your mom and dad hope for you and your brothers at that time? You know, um, they really knew how, how important it was. And man, your report card, you brought it home. Mm -hmm. And they weren't too hot about the B minuses. Oh, really? Hey, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. You know, that sort of thing. Yes. They were, yes. That was a huge emphasis. Really? Yeah. And are you a good student in the early years, Tom? No, I was. I was always a pretty good student. Mm -hmm. And was uh, it natural to you, or did you work at it? I think a combo. A little combo. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It was. It was natural, but believe me, I, I worked at it you because... Were. You man, didn't want that wire hanger. No, and, and that report card, babe, they would go over that. Yeah, they, they, it, would be, it would be reviewed. Okay. So now, where do you... You're here in L.A. Where do you go to high school? I went to Loyola High. Loyola, Loyola High. Great joint uh -huh. to, Tell this, me. to this day. Yeah. Really terrific. And... You know, there's so much Where pressure. is that located? Uh, it's on Venice Boulevard, downtown. Okay, got it. And my dad worked for Gilfillan, 
mm -hmm. uh, and they were right next door. So mm -hmm. I could ride in in the morning with my dad. And, oh, wow. And then how you got home at night from Westchester, which is quite a ways, yeah. you'd hitchhike. That's, you know, hitchhiking was easy and yeah. it was a much different. Much different time. You'd be in front of the school and have your thumb out and a lady with her two little kids in the back would Pick pull you over. Where are you going? Now, that would be unthinkable today. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah without a doubt. And so what happened? So you'd hitchhike home? Sure. Okay. And then, so you went to high school there. And during the high school years, do you have any inclination of what you want to do? Or are you just a, a high school guy enjoying his life in Los Angeles? Oh, no. I knew really what I wanted to do. Yeah, but here's where you're going to surprise the audience. What do you want to do? I wanted to be a lawyer. You did? Normally, people don't have a, at the fifth grade. Yeah, that's right. There, this is what I'm going to do. Yes. But let me tell you, Perry Mason. Perry Mason. Now, explain to the audience who Perry Mason is. Perry Mason was a lawyer on television. Yes, he was. 7 o'clock, Saturday night. And I would watch that show every Saturday. Here, here was this man, nice, gentle, never raises his voice, and was a terrific lawyer. One, one every case. One every case. So, I, matter of fact, I told this story once before, and they, this guy comes up to me and says, Tom, Perry was a lousy lawyer a couple guys from the International Academy. I said, a lousy lawyer. He won every damn case. How, how about his one loss record? Tom, that's true. But Perry didn't know doodly squat about the case until about 725. That's right. When Bill Drake, the investigator, would come in with a surprise witness in the back of the courtroom. Yeah, yeah. I said, baloney. And they made me go watch three episodes of Perry Mason, <laughs> and it destroyed and, me. And were, oh, my God, here was Perry, my so buddy. So Perry, and, you're, yeah. Yeah. So, it, but that show really had an influence on you and set the stage for this inclination toward the law. No question. So now you graduate high school, and then where do you go to college? I went to Loyola. Loyola? Right. Okay. It was... And Loyola's uh, got a, a good law school here. Yes, um, and then I went to the Loyola Law School. That's right. Okay. <laughs> but it, it, it's a better known law school today than it was at the time, right? Oh, for sure, for sure. So, give you some idea. Mm -hmm. I, was, uh, I was a very good baseball player mm -hmm. in college. Yeah, that's one of the things I want to talk to you about. And um, I even got signed by the White Sox. Now, admittedly, I was just in Chicago one day and <laughs> immediately sent to Albuquerque, but. Yeah. Um, and there, the Albuquerque Amigos were a farm club at that time of the White Sox. And so I played with Albuquerque. And we would play the Cheyenne Coyotes, the Raton Beavers, the Denver Bears. That was kind of our oh, circuit. What was your position? A second base. Second base. So anyway, so we had played Raton in the second week of September. Mm -hmm. And I went 0 for 3. I got hit by a pitch. I got Spike going into second. We lost the game. And now we're in the bus headed back to Albuquerque. And all the player books are right next to me. Mine's right on top. A player book would be like, a, not a report card, a review. Yeah, what the coaches have to coaches say about say, you. Yeah, okay. I looked at it. No one's looking. So I you pick sneak it up. A, sneak a peek? Girardi. Good field, no hit. I took, put it down. So then we stop for That's dinner. That's not good news. No. We stop for dinner, uh, headed back to uh, headed back to Albuquerque, and I called Loyola Law School. There was only one person in the school at Sunday night at 8 o'clock, and Father Donovan answered the phone. And I said, you know, Father, uh, I had been admitted, but he said, oh, well, it's too late. He said, you can never get in. We've been in class two weeks, and you'd never catch up. Gee, Father, are you sure? He said, well, I'll do this. If you're here tomorrow at 9 o'clock for contracts, I'll let you in. Well, the move was so important. When my son was born, he is named Matthew Donovan Girardi. There are certain things that happen to you in life, Mike, that really change things. <laughs>